Good afternoon, darlings, and welcome to the first episode of Comfy Craft Time. To follow along, you'll need an app called Metabane Paint, a stylus pen, or your finger, and your phone or tablet. I need to try to be really quiet today, so I'm sorry about the audio, but I'm sure you don't really mind. You can follow the little dot on screen to see where my pen is, if you really want to follow along. Now we're going to open the app and open my gallery. You can see a few projects I've worked on here, uh, but I'm going to open this prepare file I have over here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is zoom out and then go over to the paper stack symbol over on the right. I typically have around 10 to 12 layers, but you can start out with just three color layers. If you go to the plus sign, you can see all the different types of layers you can have, but let's just stick to the color layer for now. Uh, to add a drawing layer, like one I have down here, you go to the plus sign and click select an image to add, and it'll open up the last folder you used. You can use pretty much any folder you have on your phone, as you can see here. You can go over and um, go to your drive, your photos, whatever you need to do. One thing that helps me keep my lines straight is that I lower the opacity of my original drawing to anything below 50. Uh, now let's actually start with the drawing. Let's open up our pens, and you can see here these are the standard pens that come with everything pre-installed. The cloud you will need internet to access, but they've got a lot of really neat tools that can help you with um, details. But I already have a couple um, picked out here. I already have a set pen that I like to use. And now let's get into the actual drawing. I always start out with the ear because it's sort of a focal point for me. Um, it, it keeps me grounded in all of my art, when, uh, especially when I'm working on the jawline and cheek right here. As you can see, for uh, female characters, I tend to have more rounded, less sharp angles. That gives the illusion of gentleness that I like to have for, my, um, for most of my females. And now, let's see. Yeah, let's work on the mouth next. Zoom in there. I like giving my more friendly and childish characters lopsided grins to show a bit of playfulness and sass. Actions speak louder than words, you know. Uh, it's really hard to get certain angles in the lips because you want them to connect, but you also don't want them to be too sharp or too round. Now let's work on the nose. Uh, the nose is a really easy do, just a little slope and a curve. Uh, for this character, I also add a little dot here for definition. Now the eyes. The eyes are absolutely the most important part of your character. They convey so much personality in just a shape alone. It, it, it's, it's really kind of scary. Um, sorry for the noise, my cat's having a little party backstage. Um, you can kind of see here it's a little lopsided. It's really easy to get lost out of focus in your art, so you're going to want to go over to the three dots and go to flip horizontally. Right there. That way it gives you a different perspective and you can see that is way out of order. So then you can use the back button on the bottom left and try again. To get my lines to fit, uh, I always zoom in probably a little closer than I need to be. There we go. Mm, that's still a little too big. Um, the bad thing about this specific character is that none of her hair actually goes over the eyes, which can sort of hide any flaws, but it's okay. We, we can work with it. There we go. That's looking better, but her eyes are a little too far apart. So we're going to go to the top bar here after you zoom in a little bit. I don't know what this tool is called, uh, but I call it the select tool. And then we go to the actual select tool. And we can move the eye wherever we need it to be. 
Here we go. It's looking much better. Now for the hair. Uh, make sure you're not erasing anything that's not there. Um, because the wind is blowing it, we need it to be a lot more smooth. Yeah, like that. And, um, even if it's just one little piece of hair there, you want to add a little separation. Just to give it the illusion of motion. And, uh, you also want to make sure you're not, uh, stopping in the middle of your brush stroke. Because that can cause a little bit of, uh, jiggle. And you really don't want jiggle when you're working on straight lines. The more fluid the motion, the more, uh, life there is in your actual art. Whether it be actually painting or just digital painting or, uh, sketching, whatever it is. There we go. Don't worry about it cutting into her neck. That's why we have different layers. We can shave that later. And, um, there we go. A little curve there for the top of the hair. We want, uh, some, a little bit of straight lines and curves because hair is very predict- is very unpredictable, pardon, uh, when it's blowing in the wind, like how I have this character. So certain, uh, sections of her hair is bound to separate. There we go. And another thing I like to do to give the illusion of motion in my hair is I always go, um, back and forth on different hair shapes. I will, uh, rarely ever have two, uh, shapes going in the exact same direction, but they'll always have, like, a little bit of a difference somewhere. Now we go to, now let's go to the first layer, and we're going to make the neck. I doubt anyone really has trouble with necks, but that actually stumped me for a little bit when I first started drawing. And now we go into a different uh, layer for the shoulders, because we're going to want to later maybe shave the neck part, maybe shave a little bit of the shoulder, and you'll see what I'm saying when I say shave later. <laughs> You can kind of see how it's overlapping in the corner. Ooh, I did not like that angle. You can kind of see where it's overlapping in the corner there. And usually, um, no, it's not right either. I will, uh, shave certain parts off later just to make sure it's a bit more smooth. No. No. Oh, no. Ooh, I like how that's looking. Yeah, that's good. If you don't go all the way through, it's okay to... It's okay to go through and, um, just redraw over the line if you can. Don't do this for everything, but it can help on certain, uh, aspects of your drawing. Now, most people hate hands, and sometimes I do too. But once you learn that it's just the right amount of curves in the right sections, it's really not that hard. Uh, like the palm of the hand here, it's going to be a, uh, if I can get the right angle. No. Kind of zoom out, make sure I'm getting just the right length. Because I can never draw it. It's much easier to draw on an, a phone or a tablet than actually in art. Or on it in real life, I should say. That looks good. And now the second finger. Just a straight line, a down curve, and up curve. And we're just going to go up curves for the rest of the finger, out and up. And the pinky is probably the easiest. That's where you just connect the palm to the rest of the hand. Because when your hand is sideways like that, you're more than likely not going to see the pinky. Now, I know for cartoons, people tend to have straight arms. But it never looks right whenever I draw completely straight arms. So I always add at least a little bit of curve to the forearm. If I can get it to go right. That looks good. Ooh, oh, we need to doll out that corner. There we go. And um, now we're going to go up. Ooh, that is, that is way too high. 
Uh, a good thing that you can always do if you're not certain about an angle before you get too deep into your art, always zoom out to make sure that you're still in a good place. Yeah, that's good. And now we're going to move on to the leg. Notice how I don't start at the knee. I start at the uh, flat part of the leg, the front. And that's because um, I'll show you, or I'll tell you, I guess, how to do knees a little bit later. Because knees are a bit more difficult. Now, this is her right foot, so we're not going to be seeing one big toe. We're going to be seeing a couple little toes. So that's what we're doing here, just a little out and a curve around, and that's fine enough. There we go. And funnily enough, I learned how to draw um, feet from looking at my pencil when I was younger. I used to shave down my pencils to where, just, just because I was bored. And one day it just got in that shape after cracking and it, it hey, we all learn in different ways. Now, because uh, the ankle is, in fact, a joint, the calf doesn't always have to connect perfectly to the ankle, but I still like to have it connect, and you can see here I am very much struggling with that. So, I'm going to back arrow, please, thank you, and erase a little bit there, and that should help me to connect. Calves are typically very hard when you first start out, because they're not only round, but they are also a little bit angled at the very end there. Yeah, looks nice. Now let's uh, go into the kneecap. And the kneecaps are also a little bit hard because, um, yeah, different layer, please. Uh, they are not only round, they're also a little bit flat. So they have both the appearance appearance of being round and flat, and that's just very hard to uh, get over when you first start out. Um, uh, of course, we're going to move on to the thighs. Thighs are uh, very, typically very easy. You can make them uh, thinner, thicker, whatever need be. And like I said, the more fluid the motion, the better it'll look. And we're going to go down here and shave this little part here, because no one's going to notice that little dent. Now we're going to do the other side, but we're going to a different layer, of course, because we don't want these layers to um, overlap, and we're going to make sure we're on the pen instead of the eraser like I always do. Oh, I don't like how that's looking. Sometimes you start at the top, sometimes you start at the bottom, but it doesn't matter as long as you finish. A little too much out. There we go. And you only want a hint of the other leg because you're not really going to see that much if it was an actual person. And, oh no, that's way too low. Go make sure we're on the right layer. We're going to lengthen that just a little bit. There we go, that looks plausible. Now we're going to move on to the side. I have this open so you can kind of see a bit more uh, how I do my bodies in general without um, always having baggy clothes, but you can also see how uh, I can do clothes because the clothes are also baggy. It's really more of a dynamic thing than anything. Because you really want to make sure um, you can work with both. Now we're going to do this curve up here on a different layer because it's going to merge with the layer up top. And now instead of having to tiptoe around my lines, I can just go and shave that little part off. There we go. Now let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and shave this part of the hair here, because it really annoys me. Actually, we're going to fix the hair here just a little bit. There we go. Because all of her hair is connected to the back of her neck, 
as most people have. And now we're finally going to go on the third layer, which is what I usually uh, save for specifically clothes. Make sure you're on the pen, thank you. Specifically clothes and makeup. Just because you really don't want those lines to uh, overlap with literally anything else you have. Mm, there we go. And uh, you always have to make sure you're getting the right angle, which is more comfortable for you when you're going for long, fluid strokes like this. And you can see how I have a little lip out there. I'm going to release that tension a little bit. And we're going to follow through with this bottom part here. Mm. There we go. A bit more connected. And we're going to try to connect this piece here. No, we need to shape a little bit more up top. And that will give the loose clothes a lip. Oop. Uh, yeah, uh, it will automatically back up if you haven't saved in a while. And I'm sorry for that little glitch of that pen. It was probably more of a misstroke of mine than the actual app itself. Uh, now for the shorts. We're just going to go in and add some little bit there. For the details within my clothes, I always go down to half the size of my brush. Sometimes on the same layer, sometimes on a different layer. It really depends on where I am in the drawing. That looks good. And now a little, little lip over here. And we're going to curve that part. Mm. Eh. A little too round. A lot of times when you're going over the clothes, you want to go with the flow of the clothes. And you don't want to go uh, too tight because it's not suction cup to your body. And we're going to give just a little bit of a hint there. And you're going to want a solid stroke for this because it is technically part of the body. There you go. Mm. That looks better, yeah. And now we're going to... Actually, no, I think I'm going to make that part of the clothes. There we go. And little detail for the lip here. Okay. Now, before we forget, we're going to go ahead and shave certain... Excuse me, shave certain parts of um, our art here. There we go. Because honestly, I forget to shave off um, the excess lines a lot. And I usually have to either work with it or post it and then pray no one actually notices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll shave this part. This is uh, why layers are very important because I don't have to tiptoe around the other lines there. And I can just erase what I need to erase. Ooh, wrong brush. Dummy. That. Yeah, that's a little too low. There we go. And these technically are jeans. And because it's a detail, I'm going to go down to about half its size. And make a little, there we go, belt loop. Because you can't have jeans without a belt loop. And now we go to the eyes. Uh, I really like doing the eyes because I do them by hand all the time. I don't always um, take shortcuts. There is a tool that will allow me to get a perfect round circle, but in my experience, the eyes tend to look better when they're not perfectly round. Now for the teeth, I always do the side like this. However, there are other things you could do like going straight across. Or going a little bit off to the side to where you see a bit of their mouth. But like I said, I prefer going... That's a little too low. I prefer going side to side like that. Sort of split lip there. Or split teeth, I should say. And the lips. It's actually really funny. I learned how to do uh, my lips from watching Family Guy when I was younger. Because I would just see a picture of them and I'm like, Oh, I really like the way that looks. So I'm just going to yoink that. 
and we're going to bump up again. The bottom lip should be a bit more fuller than the top lip. Uh, lip. And now we go and let's do the ear. The inside of the ear, of course, is going to be smaller because it is technically a uh, detail. There we go. And now we make sure we're on the right layer to shave away any excess. Now we're going to um, make sure everything is... See, I forgot a little bit of the lip here. You always want to make sure everything is connected because the last thing you want is to use a dump tool and suddenly your entire paper is orange. And we're just going to clean up our forehead there. There we go. Now uh, we're going to add the makeup. For makeup, I usually use the um, sharp pen. And I usually bump it up to a few notches above where I usually am. 20 seems to look good, so we're going to keep it at 20 here. Now, the trip I, uh, excuse me, the trick I use for my eyelashes are the very bottom one is going to be shorter than the one right next to it. Then everything else is shorter than uh, the last gives the sort of illusion of um, fullness and roundness that I like to put in for any sort of innocent looking character. I tend to keep my eyelashes between uh, 4 and 7. Ooh, that's not good. Because that usually gives the um, that usually, uh, there we go. It makes it to where it's not too much, not too little, not too obnoxious. There we go. That's looking good. Sometimes I like to have them match, sometimes I don't. Uh, there we go. The little bottom eyelashes are also fun because they're so tiny. There we go. And you can kind of see here, they don't quite match. We're going to be a little bit. But it's okay because uh, the way she is facing, it's really not noticeable. And now right here at the bottom, we're going to add a little connector here. So you can kind of see the inside. I don't like how that looks. There we go. So you can kind of see that uh, her shirt is in fact a bit more airy. Ooh, she shaved a little too much. There we go. So it's more of a flowy outfit than it is anything else. And now we're going to go to the paper stack and make our original drawing invisible. And there you have it. And we're going to save because you have no idea how many uh, art projects I've lost because the app crashed and I didn't save. Now we're going to work on the colors. We're going to go down to um, another layer, just make four more layers. And the little clipping at the very top, you clip that for whenever you want clipping. You want uh, one layer clipping over the two color layers that you're going to have. So, there we go. Uh, we're going to go to our palette, and I have a personal palette for all the colors I have pre-picked. This is what I have for her skin tone. Whenever you're using the dump tool, you're going to want to expand the pixels just because you don't want any room in between you uh, or between the color and the um, outline itself. There we go. That's looking good. And now I'm going to show you the purpose of... Um, the uh, clipping tool, or the clipping layer, I should say. Uh, you go to a darker color, at least I will, and I'm using the splatter brush. Make sure we're not erasing, we're using the actual brush. Thank you. And you can kind of see it adds... Ooh, I did not like how that jittered. It adds the illusion of freckles. Ooh, don't like that. 
Mm. It's kind of sporadic, so you kind of have to go a couple times. Yeah, I can work with that. And you can kind of use the erase tool to clean up uh, any splatter you don't want. But as you can see, uh, the clipping tool makes it to where all of the edits you have to that one layer stays on that one layer. You're not going to see it in her hair. You're not going to see it in her actual eyeballs. You're probably going to see it later when I add the white color of the eyes to the same layer. But I like to keep my layers um, small. Too many layers adds too much confusion. I tend to keep freckles on the upper part of the cheeks because that's what I want defined. It also enhances um, her, uh, enhances the uh, colors of her eyes as well. And we're just going to add freckles along the sides and the shoulders and the legs are actually my absolute favorite to make freckles because I used to have freckled legs as a kid and I just think it's nostalgic and cute. And now we're going to add some white to our palette, to the eyes specifically here. Uh, teeth first, actually. Now we're going to go to the eyes. And you can see the freckles are on here because it's on that specific layer. We have our eye colors here on a specific layer for a reason. You'll see later. So we can just erase what little bit got into the eyes there. For edits like these, uh, when you're, ooh, oops, I forgot to mention, when you have the dump tool, you're going to want to color in areas of, make sure you're on the right layer, thank you, um, want to color in areas like that, that won't get dumped in by the tool. There we go. Now, uh, you always want the layer with the freckles and the actual natural pigmentation of the skin to be the very bottom layer of uh, clipping, but right now we're going to ignore that and we're going to focus on the eyes. Now for the base of the eyes, you want them to be a darker color, but not the darkest color. And for this part that I'm doing right now, you're going to want the base color, what you want her eyes to actually pop out as. I want them to be a more, um, excuse me, gentle green. I'm going to take a little drink here. Yeah, excuse me. And uh, I'm just going to use this tool to make it a bit round. Because it's always hard to get it even when you're doing it by hand. And actually I'm going to fix this one because I don't like how this one came out. So I'm using the full shape tool at the top. There you go. That's much better. And now we're going to go to the lightest color. It's not going to be the lightest color for long. Uh, we'll add um, a sun or a light spot in later, but this is going to be the lightest actual color you have. Just a little bit of a shine. And now you're going to want to take the pupil, which you don't want it to be black. You want it to be a borderline black color of whatever, um, whatever color you're using for the eyes because you want them to stand out from the rest of the lines. And now we're going to do white. There you go. The different shades adds more volume to the eye itself, more uh, pop. And now we're going to go on to do the hair. This time, because we're not doing a lot of, um, a lot of shading, we're going to do that next time. We can just dump and there's the hair. Of course, you have to zoom in because the dump tool won't get this in. There we go. And we're going to get this little spot make sure we're on the right layer. There we go. She's looking good so far. Now let's move on to the clothes, which we're going to go down to the very bottom layer here. I want her shirt to be white, so we're going to have to make it gray because nothing is ever truly white. And for the inside, we're just going to make it a little, little darker gray. So it gives the illusion of uh, depth. Now, jeans are really, really, really hard to actually get the right color scheme because they're never quite uniform. They're a mixture of 
darker colors like this and uh, lighter colors and faded and not faded. Mm, it's a little too periwinkle. There we go. I want her to have faded shorts here. And that gives good enough illusion. Now we're going to zoom in and do her lips real quick, which the way I do lips is I take the skin color and I just make it red because it gives um, a much more natural pink flush to the cheeks. And I'm going to make sure we're on the right layer because we're never on the right layer. A little too round. A little too out. Here we go. There we go. It's a very small detail, but I always add that just to be sure that I'm getting everything. And now we're going to go down to one more layer. The very, very, very bottom layer. And you can see here, this is the purpose of clipping layer. And it will stay on that one layer. The very bottom layer, we're going to try to make a faux background. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty. It's just going to be something little. Uh, there we go. And you can see there are two layers there. Because it'll do that. Uh, it's what this shade is, is the natural gradient, which is very useful when shading. But, um, yeah. Uh, to get your files, you're going to export PNG or JPEG. The transparent is for if you just want the uh, image itself without the background. And the JPEG, um, which you'll see after I shade, save here, excuse me. Um, the JPEG is full everything. So if you don't have an actual background, it's just white, it will save as a white background. There we go. And this is the final product. This is Miss Kate Deanery. And, um, well, this was very fun. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please comment, please like, let me know. Uh, if you have any criticisms, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!